uh, Professor Fourier, colleagues, as you would have seen uh, on our program, is Associate Professor within the Albert Latouli Center for Responsible Leadership at uh, the University of Pretoria, and as I said, coordinator of the South African SDG Hub. Willem will speak on the role of universities in achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. Willem, bye, welcome, and bye, thank you. Yeah, thank you, um, and thanks for the opportunity to say something. Let me move this thing up. Um, I have a love-hate relationship with PowerPoint presentations, which might be a bit of a dangerous thing, but I decided against a PowerPoint presentation uh, today, so hopefully I can keep you engaged on a topic that um, I think is quite relevant and quite, um, quite important. So good morning, thanks for the opportunity. Um, I do think universities have a major role to play in accelerating the socioeconomic uh, development of South Africa. And I think the sustainable development goals actually encapsulated in what's actually called the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. That's sort of the big thing, and the SDGs are within it. Have a role, can guide us in understanding how universities um, can actually implement these goals. But, but I'm also quite glad to be here, as Leslie also referred to, due to very personal reasons. I uh, completed both my undergrad and postgrad studies here at Stellenbosch. Um, and I even had the privilege of living in one of your re residences. Um, let me not say which one, but it was a very enjoyable time for five years. Despite my personal history in this town, um, I never ceased to be touched by the exceptional beauty of this environment. As I walked down Victoria Street, turning left into Ronefeld Street, I noticed especially the ancient oak trees awakening once again. Looking, for, looking further, Stellenbosch Mountain, the Simonsberg, even Botmaskop are no less impressive than they were when I studied here. The human side of this environment is similarly quite impressive. If anything, Stellenbosch has become more beautiful since I left in 2009. I noticed a number of new state-of-the-art buildings, well done to the university, um, in addition, of course, to the beautiful old Ouwifgebouw, uh, Moederker, Kweekskool, and other buildings. But there's a danger in all of this beauty. We run the risk of forgetting that all is not well, even not in Stellenbosch. In South Africa, the majority of our people face major, often existential challenges. Most recently, the staggering figure of youth unemployment was in the news. 67% of our country's young people are not employed. And more than 6 million South Africans of all ages are unemployed. This is a crisis. But this is but one element of the dire situation many South Africans face. If you consider nutrition, about a quarter, 25% of our children are uh, under the age of five, according to Stats' uh, most recent stats, um, are stunted. If we look at health indicators, this is, uh, situation is surely not better. About 7.5 million South Africans are HIV um, positive, with women aged between 15 and 49 uh, the most vulnerable group. Even if we broaden our view beyond our national borders, we notice more reasons to be deeply concerned. Uh, the impact of our activities on other species is well documented. It is generally, uh, generally agreed that the planet is currently facing only its sixth mass extinction of plants and animals, the sixth. Scientists estimate that the current extinction rate is up to 10,000 uh, 10, times the so-called background extinction rate. This means, put simply, that between 30 and a massive 50% of all species could be extinct by 2050 due to our activities. Uh, the recent alarming report of about a 90% decrease in the world's largest um, and most remote penguin population, I think, illustrates this point very well. Many scientists are, the, uh, are of the view that you, our impact on the environment are leading to changes in climate that will endanger our very existence. It's a crazy, crazy thought, actually. We are also seeing major sea changes on a geopolitical level. In my view, one of the most disconcerting developments is the fact that the very country that acted, and that's the US, as custodian of the so-called rules-based international order, seems to be actively dismantling it. This surely provides other countries with the opportunity to update and even rewrite the rules of the game, but at this point, there's no reason to be excited about this rewritten rules. Relatedly, we uh, witnessed the much-discussed European drift to more explicit nationalism and the rise of movements uh, that seem to undermine respect for fundamental human rights. This adds to the sense that things are also not well on a geopolitical level. 
It is in this rather complicated context that South Africa resolved, together with 192 other countries in the UN General Assembly, to realize the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and its Sustainable Development Goals, or the SDGs. And just a quick point. So usually when people refer to the 2030 Agenda, the, the SDGs are included in this, but the 2030 Agenda is, is slightly more um, extensive. Now, the 2030 Agenda and the SDGs are certainly not perfect. Um, a host of legitimate criticisms can and I think should be mentioned when one discusses the SDGs. And I think it's quite helpful for people promoting the SDGs to, be also, to also be their fiercest critics. As people based at universities, on the other hand, we're in any case supposed to be critical. So let me start with a few legitimate points of criticism against the SDGs. Now, the SDGs are these 17 goals, 169 targets, and more than 240 indicators that, that I think many of you might know of. Now, one, and I think the most fundamental point of criticism, relates to the value add of the Sustainable Development Goals. If you look at these goals, you see education, health, nutrition, they seem to cover things that governments in, are in any case supposed to do. In what sense are they new? Is the first question. Isn't much of the progress that will be ascribed to the SDGs in 2030 on, uh, on track, on course to happen anyway? Um, this criticism is particularly plausible when one compares the SDGs to South Africa's National Development Plan. Um, a report that's at this point not yet released where um, the government compares the NDP to the SDG says there's, a, I can't remember, something like 76% convergence, even, even higher. So, so what's new? What's, what's the value add? A second point of criticism has to do with the relationship between the SDGs and national development priorities. Most people versed in uh, development studies and development theory know that Really transformative development happens when people formulate their own priorities and then they seek to implement it. Isn't there a bit of a contradiction now trying to superimpose this, national, this, this global agenda onto national development priorities? How do you relate them? In South Africa, Kenya, Nigeria, other countries, you also, also sit with a challenge that, that these countries and our national development plans were adopted before the adoption of the 2030 agenda. Now, you can surely not change our national development priorities just to reflect the SDGs. When broadening one's view, a similar question can be asked about the African Union's Agenda 2063. Now, again, 2063, Agenda 2063 was adopted before the SDGs. Um, in fact, in the preamble to the SDGs, the specific reference is made to Agenda 2063. And 2063 goes far beyond 2030, which is the termination date for the SDGs. A third and related point of criticism leveled against the SDGs um, it's the danger of the SDGs, and this is sort of more a geopolitical one, um, unleashing a new era of aid conditionality, where development partners, typically your rich countries, tell poorer countries that we will not give you aid if you don't implement certain SDGs that we decided upon, rather than the argument of we are supporting you in formulating and implementing your own development priorities. So there's a bit of a challenge. The fourth, of course, has to do with the feasibility of, of, of um, implementing all these goals. I mean, 17 goals, 169 targets, more than 240 indicators. South Africa, let's say, as a country, we have rather sophisticated metrics and then processes, but let's say a country um, with less expensive institutions. Is this not an unfair burden on them? Shouldn't you say we rather support you to, to identify your priorities and, and implement them? So these things are significant and important. However, despite these, I would say, significant weaknesses, the 2030 Agenda and its SDGs, I do think, has the potential, have the potential to improve the lives of the most vulnerable in a very complex environment. In my view, there are um, three compelling reasons for this. Um, the first, and I think this is the most significant thing, is that the SDGs, um, they're a moral agenda. You can't, no country is compelled to implement them. They're sure they signed the documentation, but there's no legal instrument um, of forcing countries to implement these things. This opens up the possibility of recovering the most fundamental, in my view, reason for driving development. Development, in the first instance, is about recovering a sense of shared community and improving the lives of the most vulnerable groups and individuals. And this moral thrust you find in the, the preamble to the SDGs where they say it's about reaching those furthest behind first. According to me, this is extremely powerful. Um, in environments such as South Africa, but also globally, where many groupings vie for influence, often at the expense of others, 
the SDGs have the potential of reminding of, uh, us of the moral principles that go beyond our own interest, that bind us together as human beings. I think that's a very, very deep and a convincing reason for, for, for being excited about the SDGs. Secondly, this 2030 agenda, I think, has the potential to increase, uh, increase efficiencies in the existing system. Now, throughout the, the SDGs document, one finds the, the emphasis on the notion that the seven SD, uh, 17 SDGs are indivisible or indivisible. Sorry, I'm Afrikaans. I don't always know how to pronounce it. Um, so it's always this when I, when I prepare my speeches, I'm like, how will I pronounce it today? Um, viewed from one perspective, this, this seems, of course, like an unfair burden because they say it's an all or nothing affair. Either you implement all 169 uh, targets or you do nothing. However, the logic behind is the following. Be behind it is the following, and that's part of the logic we also see in this really nice um, re representation of SU uh, Stellenbosch's focus areas. It's, and that's the development is complex. Uh, to solve health problems in a village, you need to address water and sanitation. You need to do something about nutrition. It's, it's, we're trying to convince ourselves very often that it's possible to do one thing and that it's simple. It isn't, and that's the logic behind the SDGs. We need to understand how these things are interlinked in a specific community, and then we need to go for it. One of the interesting projects we, we're currently considering with our partners in government is actually identifying what we call the accelerator SDGs, so actually SDG targets. There are certain targets that if you do this one, there's an, a multiplication effect on most of the other SDGs, and we're currently investigating that. And that's part of the power of the SDGs. Um, they can also help governments to break down, therefore, the silos between different departments. One of the biggest impediments to development is we, all of us sitting sort of stuck in our silos. And the same goes for universities, too. I mean, we... We need to report to our HOD, and the HOD needs to go to the, uh, to the dean, and we need to publish in that little journal to know that you've made that sort of, at least that's my research, this sort of minuscule contribution to your field. That's important, but that's not all. The SDGs say, you know what, we need to work together. We need to break down certain silos. We need to think and and. Both strengthen the silos, specialization, whilst at the same time, doing multidisciplinary, transdisciplinary, interdisciplinary. I don't always know what the difference is, but sort of research that go beyond silos. And the same logic goes for governments. We need specialization in, within governments, but we also need to leverage on the on sort of the synergies between governments. That's a third, uh, second strength. And then there's a third strength, and that's the notion, and it's strongly connected, the notion of partnerships. Actually, SDG 17 is about partnerships. And when, when Leslie opened, I was struck by... Um, his emphasis on partnerships. That was sort of in, in your, your opening for me the main theme, and that's, that's the main enabling SDG, SDG 17. On a global level, this notion of partnerships is expressed by the fact that the 2030 agenda is applicable to both developing and developed countries. This is a major development. For the, for, for the first time, we have uh, the, the North and the South have the same vocabulary to talk about development. Now, according to one of the many urban legends that swirls around when one talks about the, the negotiations that led to the 2030 Agenda, South Africa is actually credited for um, ensuring that only one agenda was adopted. Because South Africa at that point chaired the G77 plus China, so we had to represent all those people in the negotiations, all those countries in the negotiations. And, and just before the final adoption of the SDGs, there's, there was a proposal on the table from a country in the north, and one very big foundation supported it, that we should have two sets of goals for developed countries and developing countries. And South Africa and many other countries in G77 said, you know what, no. We need one set because we're one humanity, and many of the challenges you, we face don't care about national borders. Um, and that's one of the powerful things. And I think we're not making enough of, of this shared vocabulary presented by the SDGs. So in my view, the SDGs are extremely, potentially extremely transformative, but especially on a, on a meta level, on the level of breaking down silos, on the level of, of capitalizing on the shared vocabulary, on the level of recovering the moral core of development. Um, in addition, of course, to reaching all the targets, which are also important. For me, the le meta level, however, is the, 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 the most important. Now you might ask me, okay, Willem, we're at the university. Thank you very much for sharing all of this. So what for universities? Um, Salimbosch is one of the countries, one of the continents, best research-intensive universities with this beautiful social impact focus. How are the SDGs of relevance for universities? Now, in this regard, I would like to start by distinguishing sort of two ways in which the SDGs can, uh, can be of relevance. The first is of... In is indirect relevance. Because they are so all-encompassing, most of our activities are 
already indirectly relevant to the SDGs. We did a, I wanted to say little, but it wasn't little, we did a major study of uh, research published at four of the most research intensive universities in the countries the past three years um, to find the indirectly SDG relevant research, and that was about 70% of all research published at university. Because you do something on infrastructure or water and sanitation or maternal mortality, you're already doing something on the SDGs. The slightly more difficult one is asking, when are the things that we're doing directly SDG relevant? And there you find much less research and many, much fewer, um, I would say, projects. Um, there's a danger in this also. Because seeing that the SDGs are also all encompassing, you can easily rainbow wash that's what they say these days, rainbow wash with the colors of the SDGs, anything you're doing saying it's SDG relevant. The challenge lies with using the more detailed metrics, the targets and specifically the indicators to say we are actually contributing to this very specific indicator rather than just saying we're doing education, boom, it's SDG 4. I don't think that's the most helpful approach. Um, if we want to be slightly more specific, I will, I'm... I'm often guided by a report released by the Sustainable Development Solutions Network's um, Australia Pacific chapter, which is sort of viewed as the Bible of, of universities and SDGs. And they, they identify four sectors or con concepts in terms of which universities should actually think of implementing the SDGs. The first is, is in our teaching and learning. Of course, one of the most important things we do as universities is to provide students with the knowledge and skills needed to address topics related to the SDGs. In my view, the most important th thing in this regard is actually for us to use the SDGs to, as an excuse to rethink our curricula. Um, so there's, instruct again, using the vocabulary to drive a process that universities should in any case do, and that's constantly updating their curricula. I think there's an, there's an opportunity. Um, more specifically, they provide us with a useful platform for infusing our curricula with cross-cutting skills such as systems thinking, critical thinking, self-awareness, teamwork, problem-solving mindsets, creativity, entrepreneurship, only beyond, even beyond business. So there's, a, in terms of our teaching and learning, a great opportunity. But again, you see, I like to focus on this meta-level opportunities that the SDGs present, because I think that's where their most transformative um, potential lies, the most of their pro transformative potential lies. The SDGs also, if we think about teaching and learning, provide us with an opportunity to empower our students. All universities have societies, have sort of informal and formal groupings of students, and the SDGs provide a great opportunity for students to focus their activities and to think of solutions that we wouldn't have done on our, uh, thought of on our own. When we tell them, you know what, is it not possible for you, your society to, to think of ways in which our university can break down silos between faculties or ways in which our university can actually um, heighten its impact Students can actually and want to experiment often on our behalf. There's another opportunity in my view. The last elements of, of our teaching and learning um, is that the SDGs provide us with opportunities for non-degree training. Um, certainly in Pretoria, but of, I'm 100% sure also in Stellenbosch, um, national and provincial and municipal, on municipal level government is asking us, equip us with the knowledge. We don't know how to do it. And I think there we also have, a, in terms of teaching and learning, a responsibility towards society. Then there's, of course, research. Um, I think the starting point for, for using the SDGs within the research context is simply highlighting research that's already re, uh, SDG relevant. I think that's the easiest. That's sort of the quick one, when the low-hanging fruit. But it could be much more than a public relations exercise, because that's many universities are using the SDGs simply as a PR exercise. Um, the SDGs can also help us to put together impactful research groups that identify complex problems and that are clever enough to, 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 to um, develop complex solutions to these problems. And I think, again, that's where the SDGs are quite, uh, quite impactful. Two other things, I mean, with research, we can go on, centers of innovation, all those things, uh, that's already covered. Um, another thing that universities often forget is that our governance and, and operations provide us with an opportunity to role model how the SDGs can be implemented. How does the University of Stellenbosch's supply chain look? How do we manage, how does Stellenbosch manage its buildings? Um, what's Stellenbosch's stance on gender inclusion, inclusive uh, gender equality? These things are already, I mean, this, if, if universities can actually role model the ways in which they implement the SDGs and show other actors in society that it's possible, one, one has a pot potential to accelerate development. 
And then the last thing, and that's the most important, so let's leave the best for last, is external leadership, which is your social impact to a large extent. Of course, universities play a much larger role than simply conferring degrees, publishing research, or developing innovations. We are also public entities with, in South Africa at least, with an important public role. Or, in the language of, of your conference, universities also launch and manage targeted activities with social impact as its main role. So, in addition to public, en public engagement, um, the SDGs do provide a useful framework for focusing and measuring a university's impact. Um, and I think that's, to a large extent, the way in which you also think about it, going beyond your rainbow washing, but saying we want to measure the impact and the SDGs give us this framework. Um, in my reading of the current higher education uh, landscape, Stellenbosch is actually taking the lead in this regard. I've, I've done some research in preparation for this, and it seems to be the case. Your impressive online platform, as well as your emerging metrics to categorize and even measure SDG-relevant engagement, are really defining the national conversation. In fact, I suspect that my university and many other universities in the country have a lot to learn from universities of Stellenbosch in this regard. The challenge, however, lies with how to share what you've learned and how to build networks with like-minded institutions in South Africa. Because, I mean, this is a tension, of course. Universities want to position themselves whilst building networks. Now do you strike this balance? That's a, that's a challenge, but that's a challenge all universities are faced with. In conclusion, SEGs represent an imperfect but potentially transformative platform for focusing and improving our teaching, research, operations, and external engagement, our social impact. In many respects, uh, all universities are already indirectly responding to the SDGs, but opportunities for more direct responses do remain. It is now up to us, all of us, together, to envision and implement innovative and transformative responses to the SDGs. But we should ensure that these responses aren't simply ends in itself, but that they are targeted interventions that reach those who are furthest behind first in order to build more humane societies, which I think is the deepest motivation of, the, of implementing the SDGs. Thanks a lot.